guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some things from my favorite things. And I am using the Spring Songbirds stamps and dies. I am also using this torn paper edge die and then the, I think it's called the Sunny Rays stencil. And we are going to be stretching our supplies today. So those torn paper edge dies, um, we are going to be using to create trees, branches, and snow. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, it's serving multiple purposes. Um, and multiple companies have the, that type of die, so use whatever you have. But this one happens to be on sale for $4 at the moment. Um, and I got it as a free gift in one of my previous orders, so that's why I'm using it. Let's talk about what I'm doing here. So I knew that I wanted to use the stencil to create a background scene that was going to be like the sun rising and so before I put my stencil in place I am just putting down a little bit of color um so that this will be lighter I will put my stencil on and then the exposed areas will be darker so you can actually see those rays uh, I recently used the stencil in my dog card if you remember that which I totally ruined the sky and had to fix it um and so I didn't really get to experience the stencil in the best way possible and so I wanted to reuse it also you know when you pay money for things you want to use them <laughs> you want to use them so for the sun portion I'm using scattered straw and then um, for the sky I am using salvaged patina salty ocean and mermaid lagoon these are all distress inks and then I am going to tape this in place. You will notice when I was doing my um, ink blending that there's kind of like a little bit of a white border, a little bit of a gap in between the yellow of the sun and the blue of the sky and that is intentional so that I don't create green. Um, the salvage patina which is more of a blue green is a great buffer color for that. Um, and so I'm just going to go through and make this a little bit darker and then I'm going to do some spatters of clean water of perfect pearls because I like well really honestly I like that way it looks in any background but I especially like the way it looks in backgrounds where there's um light because I think that it looks a little bit magical and that's really um I mean who doesn't want to create magic on their card right isn't that goals for most of us so um the torn paper edges why is it four dollars uh so when I ordered the last time, time before, can't remember, I order a lot of my favorite things because I like them. Um, they always do, the, and this is year round, so they have like their regular sales, they have their Wednesday Blitz days, um, and then, but year round they have this, if you spend a certain amount of money, then you get a free gift. And so for me, um, and you get to pick it too, it gives you like three choices and you can pick which one you want. Um, so I chose the torn paper edges just because I thought that that would make some fun backgrounds. And then when I was looking through my stamps and I knew that I wanted to create something, um, that was not holiday like I wanted a winter card that wasn't holiday and so I was looking at my options and I saw these little spring songbirds they also have winter songbirds which are adorable and have little scarves and stuff um but I was like yeah I can totally use little birds I mean that would be super cute so I decided I was going to do rainbow birds and then my rainbow birds needed to sit on something and I was like how am I going to make trees and here we are doing this video um and that's how that came about <laughs> so here I'm just doing all those things in the background that I told you about. I will show you, try to anyway, a little bit of the shine. Um, you did probably notice that I am about a, a quarter of the way up my card before I started my stencil and that's because it's going to be covered by the snow. So here I have all of my birds laid out in this particular stamp set. There's also flowers but since it's a winter scene I'm not going to have any flowers. I'm just going to have the little birds um, and so I'm stamping these down in uh, ink that is safe for alcohol markers because I am going to be coloring with my Copics today and you guys will be very proud of me because I'm actually doing two color blends. I'm not doing four color blends like I usually do and I think the birds are still very cute. So if you came for the trees let me also teach you about how to get some dimension with minimal amount of Copic markers because we believe in teaching multiple lessons here on my channel. So for the two color blends, um, this like this little red guy, I'm going to 
completely fill in my bird with my lightest color. In this case, that's an R35. I realize that it's not a super light color. You could definitely go lighter, uh, but I wanted this bird to look red and not pink. So that is why I chose to go with a, a true red as my lightest color. Then I'm going to go in with my next color and I'm going to add that to the areas that I want to be the darkest. So just shadows underneath the wing, kind of up and around the back of the head, the back of the wing, the tail that's coming out from underneath. And then I'm going to go in with my lightest color and blend that out um, again, but I'm not going to completely cover everything because I Copics are transparent. And so you build them up. And so the one layer of the R35 is one color for me. Then I add the R29, then I blend that out with the R35. So now I'm I'm building up on this and I'm having three different colors, even though I only have two markers. And then I go back in with the darkest color again, just in the areas that I want to be the darkest. And I do this for every bird, which I am going to show you all of. So you can see that this works, this technique works no matter what kind of color combination you're using, um, that you can get good shading. Now, some of them work better than others. I'm not going to pretend like that's not true. Um, yellows are a little bit harder to get good shading, but that's true no matter how many colors you're using. Uh, the blues are typically easier to add shading to. The greens... Um, the purple was super easy. That one was pretty apparent that you could definitely see there's added shading. And then the same thing with the blue greens. So it just depends on what color combination, how hard you have to work for it. But it is certainly achievable with two colors. Um, like I said, as long as you're building them on top of each other and leaving um, separate layers so that you have that dimension. If you cover everything every time, it's just going to be one solid color, and that's not what we're we're going for. So, um, oh, the sale. That's what I was going to tell you about. Why is this thing $4? So anyway, um, they're having a 40% off sale. Uh, my favorite thing is this, and it's good through um, midnight tonight, New Year's Eve, uh, which actually is tomorrow. I'm doing my voiceover the night before. But um, yeah, it's good until then. And I cannot tell you what, I mean, I'm sure the sale has been going on for a couple of days now, so I'm not sure what they have left. When I went and looked, they still did have quite a bit. Um, but yeah, really, really good sales. These, I mean, there's a bunch of them. They're, they're not the only ones, but um, definitely something worth looking into. And they obviously have the added benefit of... Um, the free gift and then it went at a certain price point you also get like free shipping um so those are the kinds of stores that i look to shop at because obviously as a consumer just like the rest of you i am looking to try to stretch my pennies as far as possible which is also why it is beneficial to learn techniques like this to use your dies or stamps for other things than they were intended um, so that you can get more out of them because all of this stuff is costly. It just is. Um, you know, with most hobbies, that, that is the case. So, tomorrow's New Year's Eve. We haven't even talked about what I did for Christmas because I was too busy telling you about how we got stuck in the driveway. Um, so to, to just quickly uh, complete that story, because I didn't even get to the holidays, <laughs> that was just like Friday afternoon, um, we ended up Friday, like I said, his we got the plans got canceled, but his brother was closer, so they ended up coming over and it was nice to see them. Then Saturday, um, we didn't really do much of anything. Eric, where did he go? I can't remember where he went. Oh, he went to get my, oh, this is, uh, so I had put in a Kohl's order and I had thought these apps are so tricky. And I realized that like, you know, I'm not the best with technology. I understand that. Um, here I showed you originally a V15, but it just wasn't dark enough. So I had to switch it to a V06 to do my shading. Don't be afraid to kind of play around with the markers that you have and see um, how you can get them to work together. And if you don't have... Um, you know, multiple markers. If you've ordered like a Copic set and you don't have ones that blend together, um, you can always use a gray or you can always use its complementary color. Um, so for 
purple that would be yellow. You could add um, shading with some yellow and it will desaturate the color and add shading kind of naturally. Um, that one's a little bit more tricky. The gray is pretty easy. Um, so I had ordered some of my gifts for my nieces and nephews uh, from Kohl's and I had thought that I was having them delivered. But then when I went to go check on the order because I didn't have anything and it was like coming up on Christmas, I realized that I had actually ordered them for pickup and it's a blizzard. <laughs> so Saturday was not as bad with the like snow accumulation. It was just frigid and windy. Um, so he took Peanut to his dad's house because it was his day with him. He um, we split them. So one year I'll have them on Christmas Day and his dad will have them on Christmas Eve and then the next year it'll be flip-flopped. So he took him over to his dad's and um, then he went to, very generously, <laughs> drove in the snow to go get my items. And um, then while he was out, he called AAA about the dead battery and they were like, yeah, we'll send somebody out. Um, you know, send We'll send somebody out before 9 p.m. tonight is what they told us. Um, here, I'm just lining up my dies. Um, and then here's where I'm going to do the torn paper edges dies. Now, they come connected and I left them connected to do my branches. So I'm going to cut them out m multiple times next to each other. And you'll see how I get the thin branches is actually the spaces where the two dies are next to each other. Um, that's how I got them to be a little bit thinner and not as thick. So um, just something to keep in mind because obviously you'll have thinner branches the higher up you go in the tree. And then to do the snow, I'm going to trim them apart. I'm sorry, I'm going to do the tree trunks first. So here I'm just cutting off the left and right hand sides um, and I'm going to use these as my tree trunks. And I did adhere them to my cardstock just slightly like, oh, what is the word that I want? Like I made the trunk wider at the bottom and more narrow at the top um, for both of my tree trunks on each side. So, um, and then I am going to use them again separately to do the snow, but the snow will be horizontal, not vertical, um, since, you know, that's how snow lands, <laughs> is flat on the ground. Uh, and then from there, we will get into the coloring of these items, um, I did do more ink blending, and then I did a fun little snow technique, um, so I'm going to do the snow rather than muddying up the waters with a bunch of other colors. I just decided to do the snow with the salvage patina and it worked out well. I did have to check it to make sure that my ink blending came up high enough on the second area of snow, my second layer of snow. And then I used brush corduroy to do all of my um, tree trunks and the tree branches but I will tell you I cut way more branches than I needed like I needed a third <laughs> of the branches that I cut um but I wasn't sure and it, I was trying to be safe than sorry um so anyway he went to Kohl's and got my items he called AAA and they were like yeah we'll send somebody out before 9 p.m so they show up and they're like, yeah, they contract, AAA contracted us out to change, like, to come, but we only do towing. We don't offer, um, a battery change. And he's like, okay, thank you. So he calls AAA back and they're like, yeah, that's the only place that we have that's contracted with us in your area. So basically we pay for a service that was absolutely zero help. Uh, he was much nicer about it than I would have been. And he just moved on. Um, so ultimately he ended up doing it on Monday, but he ended up going and buying the battery and just uh, changing it out himself. Um, which, considering the like the AutoZone people told us that it would be like a forty-five minute change out, and he managed to do it uh, himself in an hour, is pretty impressive. Back to the card. So here, these are my tree trunks. I'm going to make them look like tree trunks by adding some wood grain. Please, please, please don't think that you can't do this. And please, please, please don't overthink it. Uh, it's just a bunch of wavy lines. Draw yourself some circles as little knots. And then you're just going to go from your lightest color out to your darkest. And then take your lightest color back over everything one more time to just blend it out. And ta-da, you have wood grain. 
I do have a more in-depth video on this. Uh, I think I did a floor with it, um, but this is just, you know, kind of like a super quick kind of crash course in it. And it doesn't have to be perfect uh, because ultimately the birds are going to be our focal point. The, they just need something to sit on. This is the something to sit on. So uh, that was Saturday. And then we finished wrapping because Peanut was out of the house. So we finished wrapping all of the kids stuff. Um, and surprisingly, like we're, we were up a little bit later, but not up as late as we usually are. So that part was nice. And a lot of that have to do with the fact that I, <laughs> that my husband gets started wrapping early, um, cause he's wonderful and organized and put together where I am not. Um, and I'm very, everything's last minute. So let's, uh, let's talk about this fun snow technique. So here I have some white pigment ink. You could also use clear embossing ink. Um, and I'm just kind of like pressing the side of my branch into the foam pad. And when you press it in, because it is foam, it does come up a little bit. The harder you press, the more pigment ink you will apply, the more snow you will have. And then I am using white puff embossing ink. You've probably seen me use this a couple of times recently and in you see me here using my fingers i did end up switching to tweezers because that's much safer because my fingers are not actually made out of asbestos um and so i, I just heat set that and when it heat sets it puffs up and it looks like snow you may be concerned at this juncture that i only have distressing coloring on my branches don't worry we're going to add more dimension i'm not going to let them walk out of here looking like this um and so you can just add as much snow or as little snow as you would like. Some of my branches have a lot of snow. Some of them have a little bit, like just whatever you're feeling like. Um, but super fun technique to just add some snow. You could also do this with the actual snow that we cut. You could put this on the edge. Um, you could put this on top of other items that, you know, would maybe gather snow in an outside scene. Here's ultimately the branches that I ended up needing, <laughs> just a little handful. And um, I am going to go in with those same brown Copic markers. Just be careful when you're doing your coloring because you can't, I mean, alcohol markers are color anything. So you can color your snow brown if you're not being careful. This doesn't have to be perfect. I didn't take my shading all the way up to my snow and it was perfectly fine. Like just adding a little bit of shading is enough for people to get the point. Um, so Saturday was good. We woke up on Christmas morning. Um... And, you know, we basically, it actually worked out really well because I don't get peanut until 1030 on Christmas morning when I have them on Christmas day. And so like we were able to get, because Caitlin doesn't even know what is happening. So we were able to get her up, feed her, change her, get her dressed for the day, go pick up peanut, bring him home, do our Christmas together, um, which was wonderful. My Fitbit broke a couple of weeks ago weeks ago and so um actually my in-laws got me a new fitbit which was wonderful peanut um got me a um canvas picture that's like our fam one of our family portraits from caitlin's uh series of professional photos which i absolutely love my wonderful husband extraordinarily thoughtful uh practical gift that is actually very helpful to me he got me a new laptop um, because I have so many problems with this one and my video editing and, you know, it's just old. It just technology goes by so fast. So back to the card. At this point, we have all of our pieces parts done and we're going to start adhering everything together. And I completely forgot all of the skills that I have learned as a card maker. I do not know why. I could not adhere this card together correctly, but I couldn't. So here I'm putting down this tree too soon too soon. I'm supposed to put snow down first. Um, and I'm not going to realize it until after I glue the snow down. And then I'm going to be like, wait a minute, the snow is up. Like there's not enough tree. And then I realized that I was supposed to do the snow first and then the tree and then the more snow and I have to pull it up. And I do this multiple times. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real y'all. I, I, did this with the regular glue. I did this with the uh, foam adhesive that I use later on. Like I was just peeling everything up off of this card base multiple, multiple times. Uh, I don't really know why. Maybe I was rushing. Maybe that was it. Not sure. So I did one layer of snow 
and then I did my tree. And then I'm going to do the second layer of snow, and then I'm going to do the other tree. This is going to create a difference in um, just the layout. So it just looks more interesting. So we have one tree that's a little further set back in the snow, and then we have one tree that's, def you know, a straightforward in the foreground where there's no snow in front of it. And this is just something that is a very little thing that you can do to make your car a little less meh. You know what I'm saying? Just something a little more interesting. So really, at this point, you could leave none, like you could put none of the birds on, you could put the branches in a sentiment. And I think that this would be a super cute card, um, just, you know, with its little landscape scene. But I wanted those rainbow birds. I had, when was it? A couple of days ago, I was in like a Facebook group or something, and I saw somebody ask like, can somebody please tell me when we'll be done with all of the rainbow cards? And let me just tell you on this channel, the answer is never. We will never be done with the rainbow cards because I love them and they make me happy. And I'm sorry if they make that person sad, but they make me happy. And so I will make them. So here are some things to note. This little branch that I'm putting on here, the snow is facing the wrong way. The snow is facing down. <laughs> The snow is defying gravity, <laughs> if you will. And I'm not going to realize it until I put my other branch in place. And then I'm going to be like, wait a minute, that's not right. And then I'll have to peel up that branch too. Because, I don't know, that was the theme of this card. Peel everything up and re-adhere it. Um, so, yeah, thankfully I had another branch with the snow facing the correct direction um, that was relatively the same size, so you didn't even see where I pulled it up. But this is one of the reasons why, like, I love so many people's glue, but this is one of the reasons why my Tombow Mono Multi Glue is, like, my go-to, because it gives me a lot of wiggle room. And clearly, I need a lot of wiggle room, because I don't even know how to put a card together, y'all. <laughs> just, you know, just that kind of day. So, uh, so anyway, so Christmas, um, he got me a new laptop, which was wonderful. And then, uh, the kids wanted to get him a new Kindle. He has been reading more lately and his Kindle was like literally the first Kindle that was ever made. So, um, they got him a new Kindle and then I got him a Ninja Creamy, which is an ice cream maker. I have never met anybody in my life who loves ice cream as much as my husband loves ice cream. Um... And so that was one of his um, bigger gifts. And then just like, you know, t-shirts and stuff like the things that we need. Um, and so the other thing that I got was my heatless curlers. So I'm super excited to try those. I have not tried them yet, but I think tonight is my night and I will let you know how it goes. But I'm very excited. I hope that it works. Um, so here you can see that I adhered all of my little birds with um, some foam adhesive so that they were kind of popped up. And then I am going to do the same with my sentiment. I'm going to put it in the wrong place. I'm going to peel that back up as well. And then I'm going to scoot it over. <laughs> and then I put my one little teal bird down on the ground. Um, just, you know, something a little, something a little different. And then I'm going to add some uh, just white detail to the little birds as well as some shimmers and that's pretty much the whole shebang. Um, but then so after we did our Christmas we went to my side of the families and we did Christmas there. We did breakfasts and then open gifts um, and then uh, Eric, well Eric actually had to bring Caitlin home to nap before we did breakfasts because she was already losing it. Um, and then we did gifts after he came back. Uh, and then we did dinner and it was good. It was a wonderful day. We did our Christmas with Eric's side of the family on Monday, which was also super nice to see everybody. Um, and they were able to come out to our house. So we did Christmas three times. Um, so it was like once we cleaned up one Christmas, there was another Christmas happening, which really I got to tell you is not a bad problem to have because we got to see all of our family and it was wonderful. So that's it for story time. And that's it for the card. This is the whole thing put together. I hope that you're inspired to kind of see your dies a different way, get more bang for your buck, stretch your supplies. You can do it. I have faith in you. Thank you so much for uh, spending your time with me today. I wish you a wonderful, happy new year. I hope that 2023 is good to you and I will see you guys next year. Bye.